Well, good afternoon once again, and welcome to this uh, Lunchtime with Pastor Shane for Tuesday, March 16th. Uh, as you are aware, um, we are going to read some scripture together and some readings for reflection and pray together, and there hopefully will be some word or phrase that uh, pops out at you that the Holy Spirit has kind of tweaked your conscience or heart about, and if you would uh, write that down, uh, and then... Uh, when you spend that uh, alone time with God, listening for his still small voice, you can uh, reflect on that, meditate on it, and see what the Holy Spirit has to teach you about that. And I would encourage you to journal all of that down and um, get the most out of this time that we have together. Well, as we begin, let's once again start with the world's greatest collection of church jokes. This comes from a section about uh, kids, but uh, this is called A Quick Grace. The pastor was invited over for dinner and asked to lead in prayer for the meal. After a brief prayer, little Fred said approvingly, you don't pray so long when you're hungry, do you? <laughs> Apparently used to the long prayers the pastor was saying at the church. Well, as we begin our time together, uh, again, from a guide to prayer for ministers and other servants, let's uh, start with a prayer uh, inviting the Holy Spirit in. Let's pray. Almighty God, we ask you uh, today to renew our spirits, to draw our hearts unto yourself, that whatever work you have for us today would not be a burden to us, but an actual delight. We ask that we would have such love of you that all of our obedience to you and to your commands would be sweet. Help us to serve you with cheerfulness and gladness the same cheerfulness and gladness as that of children. <clears throat> May we delight ourselves in you, and rejoice in all that is to the honor and glory of your name. It is in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> Excuse me. Well, our psalm for this week is Psalm 32, as you are aware, and I'm going to read that today from the New Living Translation. Oh, what joy for those whose disobedience is forgiven, whose sin is put out of sight. Yes, what joy for those whose record the Lord has cleared of guilt, whose lives are lived in complete honesty. When I refused to confess my sin, my body wasted away, and I groaned all day long. Day and night, your hand of discipline was heavy on me. My strength evaporated like water in the summer heat. Finally, I confessed all my sins to you and stopped trying to hide my guilt. I said to myself, I will confess my rebellion to the Lord, and you forgave me. All my guilt is gone. Therefore, let all the godly pray to you while there is still time, that they may not drown in the floodwaters of judgment. For you are my hiding place. You protect me from trouble. You surround me with songs of victory. The Lord says, I will guide you along the best pathway for your life. I will advise you and watch over you. Do not be like a senseless horse or mule that needs a bit and bridle to keep it under control. Many sorrows come to the wicked, but unfailing love surrounds those who trust the Lord. So rejoice in the Lord and be glad, all you who obey him. Shout for joy, all you whose hearts are pure. I like verse 8. The Lord says, I will guide you along the best pathway for your life. I will advise you and watch over you. It's a very comforting uh, comforting verse. And if we will stay surrendered, he will indeed uh, guide us. Uh, our scripture reading today is uh, for today is coming from the New Testament book of 1 Corinthians, Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. And it is uh, from chapter 15, verses 1 through 28. So if you want to turn there to 1 Corinthians. 15, 1 through 28, I'll be reading from the New International Version. Now, brothers and sisters, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, which you received and on which you have taken your stand. By this gospel you are saved, if you hold firmly to the word I preached to you. Otherwise, you have believed in vain. For what I received, I passed on to you as of first importance. 
that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas and then to the twelve. After that, he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers and sisters at the same time, most of whom are still living, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles, and last of all, he appeared to me also as to one abnormally born. For I am the least of the apostles and do not even deserve to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace to me was not without effect. No, I work harder than all of them, yet not I, but the grace of God that was with me. Whether, then, it is I or they, this is what we preach, and this is what you believed. But if it is preached that Christ has been raised from the dead, how can some of you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? If there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. Our preaching is useless, and so is your faith. More than that, we are then found to be false witnesses about God, for we have testified about God that he raised Christ from the dead. But he did not raise him if, in fact, the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised either. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile, for you are still in your sins. Then those also who have fallen asleep in Christ are lost. If only for this life we have hope in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. But Christ has indeed been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead comes also through a man. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ all will be made alive. But each in turn, Christ, the firstfruits, then when he comes, those who belong to him, then the end will come when he hands over the kingdom to God the Father after he has destroyed all dominion, authority, and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death, for he has put everything under his feet. Now, when it says that everything has been put under him, it is clear that this does not include God himself, who put everything under Christ. When he has done this, then the Son himself will be made subject to him who put everything under him, so that God may be all in all. Well, some good, uh, good stuff in there. Um, certainly about the uh, resurrection of Christ, uh, the list of all of the people that saw Christ after that resurrection uh, as proof that it indeed uh, did happen. And then Paul goes on to explain uh, uh, that if we are not believing in that and believing uh, what has been passed on to us about his resurrection, about all these witnesses, I once heard someone say that uh, more people saw Christ uh, after uh, the crucifixion uh, and resurrection, saw Christ walking around and saw Columbus uh, discover America. Uh, but we believe the one and doubt the other. Well, the reading for reflection today kind of is, uh, is an interesting uh, reading for reflection. It actually comes from The Velveteen Rabbit by Marjorie Williams. So here's an excerpt from that. Uh, she writes, the skin horse had lived longer in the nursery than any of the others. He was so old that his brown coat was bald in patches and showed the seams underneath, and most of the hairs in his tail had been pulled out to string bead necklaces. He was wise, for he had seen a long succession of mechanical toys arrive to boast and swagger and by and by break their mainsprings and pass away, and he knew that they were only toys and would never turn to anything else. For nursery magic is very strange and wonderful, and only those playthings that are old and wise and experienced like the skin horse understand all about it. What is real? asked the velveteen rabbit one day when they were lying side by side near the nursery fender. 
before Nana came to tidy the room? Does it mean having things that buzz inside you and a stick out handle? Real isn't how you are made, said the skin horse. It's a thing that happens to you. When a child loves you for a long, long time, not just to play with, but really loves you, then you become real. Does it hurt? asked the rabbit. Sometimes, said the skin horse, for he was always truthful. When you are real, you don't mind being hurt. Does it happen all at once, like being wound up, he asked, or bit by bit? It doesn't happen all at once, said the skin horse. You become. It takes a long time. That's why it doesn't often happen to people who break easily or have sharp edges or who have to be carefully kept. Generally, by the time you are real, most of your hair has been loved off and your eyes drop out and you get loose in the joints and very shabby. But these things don't matter at all because once you are real, you can't be ugly except to people who don't understand. So a little parallel there, I think they're using uh, the story of the Velveteen Rabbit to parallel um, you know, this lifelong uh, process uh, that we have in becoming uh, Christ-like uh, after he has uh, loved us or we have been loved by him for many, many years. And so we, we know that uh, sanctification is a, a lifelong process that we get there bit by bit. That's what I got from it anyway. Maybe you picked up uh, something different. Well, let's... Uh, Allow, uh, allow us to go into just a few moments of silent prayers. I know there may be people on your heart, the things on your heart you want to lift up. So if you'll do that now, then I'll, I'll close this out. Lord God, as we uh, continue on in our uh, time today, Lord, we do want to pause to spend that quiet time alone with you as we have this gift, this wonderful gift of the Holy Spirit. And uh, often it goes unopened, uh, never used. And so uh, we pray for a very blessed time, a sweet time uh, of hearing your still small voice uh, as we meditate on the scriptures we have heard, on the reflection for reading. Uh, pray that your Holy Spirit would bring that word or phrase uh, up to us, to whatever unique uh, word that we needed to hear today, that we may have you further teach us on that. Lord, we lift up all those people that we have silently lifted up, uh, whether uh, it is a joy for something that is going on in their life, or if whether it is a concern and a prayer for your healing hand in some way. Uh, but we bring them uh, to you in faith and assurance, knowing that you do all things well. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, our uh, hymn is, O Love Divine, What Hast Thou Done? And so we'll read another verse of that. Again, this is written by Charles Wesley. And so verse number two is this, is crucified for me and you to bring us rebels near to God. Believe, believe the record true. Ye all are bought with Jesus' blood. Pardon for all flows from his side. My Lord, my love is crucified. Well, uh, as we part now to go into our quiet time with God, uh, hear this benediction. Be bound to Christ for this day and always. Amen and amen. Thank you so much again for joining me uh, today and the uh, blessings on you as you, uh, you go into your quiet time. And we will see you back here tomorrow at noon.